In this lesson, we are going to get started with creating our project and we'll concentrate on something simple, just showing one question on the screen. In particular, we're going to be looking at how to represent a question as a variable in JavaScript and we'll be showing a question which is composed of a question title as well as the possible alternatives, possible answers on the HTML document. Let's head over to our code editor and get started. I've created a new project which includes index.html as well as an empty script file. To represent a question in JavaScript, we'll be using an object, as that allows us to store an entity with different properties in a variable. Let's create our variable. It's going to be called question. We know that questions have a title, which is the word in Spanish. Let's create a sample question here. The title will be gato, which means cat. Then we're going to be showing to the user a list of possible solutions and those we're going to call alternatives. The alternatives the user will see, let's say that they will be dog, cat, bird and fish. We know that the correct solution here is cat, which is in position. If we start here, this is position zero. This is position one. And so we want to store the correct answer here just so that we can check later on, and that's going to be in position one. Optionally, you can store the actual word as a correct answer. And I do have to say that for everything that I do here, there are many other alternative solutions. So feel free to explore other architectures if you want to get a bit deeper into the language. Next, in order to show my question to the user, I'm going to have to create some containers where the different information will be displayed. So let's go to HTML and add our code above the script inclusion. Normally, you always add your script inclusion at the bottom of your document, right before the closing of the body tag. I'm going to add a div for the question title, and I'm going to give it the ID of title. Let's type in some sample code for now. So I should be seeing in the browser that word up here. Next, for the alternatives, we're going to be using a list, an unordered list, and each one of the list items will show a different possible response. We want to duplicate this line many times and to do so in Visual Studio you can press Ctrl C, Ctrl V or Command C, Command V on the Mac like so and that will show what this is looking like. What we want to do now is of course replace this data by our own data. So I'm actually going to delete this because I just want to show you what that was going to look like. We're going to give our list items a class which is going to be called alternatives, alternative, like so. Great, so let's now go to JavaScript and start by adding the title here of the word that we want to show. At the moment, it's all empty. The first step here will be to select the DOM element that we want to modify, and we're going to store that in a variable. I'm going to call my variable title div, and we're going to select this by doing document.get element by ID and then enter the ID, which is title. Going to zoom out a little bit. There we go. So now that we've selected it, now we can modify it. Title div dot text content will be equal to question dot title. And that should be enough to show that title there. Great. To keep my code organized, I'm going to place all of this in a function so that then we can call that function multiple times. Start by typing function. The name here will be show question. And the parameter will be a question that we need to pass in. So let's call this question Q. And let's move all of this code inside of our function. And make sure to add some indentation just for readability. And instead of question.title, we're going to do q.title, as that will be gathered from here. And then we, if we want to call this function, we can just do show function and we can pass in our question. So if I run this code, it should be the exact same result. Great. Well, now let's address the last part, which is the alternatives part. If you want to select every one of these one at a time, you could go and add a certain ID to each one of them. But since they all behave 
in the same way there is a different way of doing this which is to select it all by the class in this case alternative and then work on an iteration and change all of them let's go and select them all in this case we're going to be selecting them by class in css when you select by class you type dot alternative or name of the class and then you add certain css rules that's how css works well the good thing about the dom api is that there's a way to select everything by using the same types of queries that you use in css so in this case we're going to be selecting by a query and for that we are going to be using document dot query selector all this will go and select all of the elements that satisfy a certain css query in this case it will be dot alternative that is the same query that you would use in css we definitely want to put this in a variable so let's call this alternatives like that just an average a bit of an abbreviation so after we've selected this it's always a good idea to check in the console to be sure that it's working as expected and you can see here that we have four li nodes selected so four list items to go over each one of them we're going to be using the for each method which is part of the result that you get from when doing these queries for each takes a function as a parameter and we can pass in different parameters here one of them is the element itself and the other one is the index the position of the element let's open the function body and in the function body if we call this element variable here this will give us access to each one of these as the iteration progresses so we can go and change their values Let's type element.textContent and we could change the value to, let's say, A. So you can see that they're all being modified to A. But we don't want to modify them to A. We want to modify them to the corresponding alternative. For that, we can access our queue variable, which contains the question we're passing in, and type in queue.alternatives. And now, what position is this going to be? Well, the good thing here is that we have that index parameter. So that will start from zero and increase in each iteration so if we do that we can actually get all of these one at a time let's save and check to see if it works and there we go well that is all for this lesson as you can see we've created the basic html template that we're going to be using in our app and we created a method that receives a question as a parameter and inside of that method you can modify the title that you're going to show as well as showing each one of the alternatives for the alternatives, we selected them all using query selector all, and then we iterated through each one of them and changed their corresponding values. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next lesson. In this lesson, I'm going to start with the code of the previous lesson. We are going to be taking that approach going forward so that we can build up our app. The way user interaction will work here is that the user will be able to click on any of the alternatives and we'll check whether that's the correct answer. But to keep things simple at first, let's go and try a simple example of using click events. I'm going to add a new element here in my index.html file. It will be a button. It's going to have a certain ID and it will just say click me. We want to be able to listen to these clicks and show something in the console. For that, we're going to start by selecting our button document.getElementById and the ID here it needs to be entered and this will grab our button and let's let's refresh here so that we can uh, see the button to listen to click events type the name of your variable and then dot add event listener this is a method that allows us to pass what's called an event listener. That basically means we're gonna specify what event we want to listen for. In this case, we want to be listening to a click event. And whenever there is a click event, something needs to happen and that will be represented as a function here. So this function will be executed every time that there's a click on the button. I can go and I can type console.log and this will say clicked, save, reload your index.html file and if you click now you're going to see that every time you click you are running this function so that's really how they work next we want to be listening to events for all of these list items 
you could go and give them all a separate ID and you could select them individually and check that. But since we're already selecting them all using query selector all and we are iterating through them, for now, we're going to be adding our event listening here and check that the answer is correct. I say for now because there will be some changes made to this architecture later in the course. So for now, we're going to type in our element, which is this list item, and we're going to add that same event listener. Add event listener. We are listening to click events. And let's create our function here. In the body of the function, I'm going to access my element again and change the text content just so that we can be sure that this is working. If I refresh and I click on these list items, you can see that their content is being changed. And that means that our click listening is working. And now we can get rid of this and instead check for the correct answer. Now we need to get the answer that the user entered, which would be the position index. So let's check the correct answer. And for now, we're going to do this inside of here. Later on, we're going to move it to a separate place. How do we know if the answer that was submitted is the correct one? Well, we need to use an if statement to check. First of all, what's the correct answer? The correct answer would be q.correctAnswer. So q.correctAnswer needs to be equal to whatever the user clicked on. And that would be, in our case, the position of the current alternative starting from zero, so that is index that we have already used to show the text. We're also going to use that to check for correctness. So if this is equal, then we're going to show in the console correct answer. Let's go and save and refresh, and let's check that, see if it's working. I'm going to click on dog, and nothing is happening. If I click in cat, then I see correct answer. If I click on bird and fish, nothing happens. We can add an else statement here to also show when something is not the correct answer in the console. So let's go and save. And you can see that's the wrong answer. That is the correct answer. That's the wrong answer. And that is the wrong answer. Great. So we have basic click functionality. This button that we added, we can definitely get rid of. Uh, so I'm going to leave that up to you. I'm going to keep that in this file, but in the next uh, lesson, that is not going to be around. Well, that is all for this lesson. You have learned something really useful, which is how to detect for clicks basics of user interaction. Now, your applications and projects can have a whole new layer of interactivity to them. Thank you for watching this lesson. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.